Welcome to Dubai. Welcome to the Dubai City Church. We love you and we thank the Lord that the Lord has sent you to us. So come and share the word of God with us. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for your kindness and thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, well, I mean, uh, there are many more years to come. In Jesus' name. Praise be to God. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm blessed and honored to be here with you, my dear uh, brother Ashish Thomas. I have heard a lot about uh, the church here. I know about his dedication and his wife's dedication to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when the invitation came and the opportunity arose, here I am. I couldn't stay away from you. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm privileged to be here among you. God bless you all. And above all, Jesus is here. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We serve a mighty God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you very much. My background is German. I am a German national. My ancestors come from the East in Germany, which is thickly wooded, uh, I'm talking of pre-war um, times, and uh, my family didn't serve God at all. They didn't know the Lord. One day as a young man, I studied the family album, the family tree, and discovered that my ancestors we are ungodly people, except for my grandfather and my father. So I said to my father, how did God break into the Bonke family? And the story my father told me struck me. He said in 1922, my grandfather was very, very sick. He had a disease sensitive to touch, rheumatism or gout or who knows what. But every time he had to move or was touched, he screamed. He was writhing in pain. There was no hope. There was no help. There was no medical help. And they didn't know Jesus. And the whole village could hear him scream day and night year after year and then in 1922 a miracle happened an American missionary lost his way in the forest and came to the village and instead of complaining that he had lost his way his first question was is there anybody sick in this village Oh yes, they said, here's somebody very sick, right here in the bonky house. When that man, his name was Louis Graf, entered the house of my ancestors, he entered it like a burning torch. He preached the gospel. My grandfather and my grandmother received Jesus Christ. And then he said, the Holy Spirit has sent me for a demonstration of the power of God. He took my grandfather by the hand and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Heavenly power flowed through my grandfather. He jumped out of bed, shaking like a prisoner watching his prison walls fall and his chains were struck off his his aching body he touched his wrists they were no more thick and swollen they were supple like those of a young man
He started to cry. He started to jump. He started to run. He embraced his wife. They wept together and rejoiced. And the missionary said, I'm not finished yet. You still need to receive the Holy Spirit. And instead of giving them a long teaching, he had no time to give a long teaching. He laid hands on them and both broke forth speaking in new tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah! I was born 18 years later. Because of that happening, I was born to spirit-filled, born-again parents. Yeah. And I feel when that man entered the house of my ancestors, the Holy Spirit put the thread through my needle. He, God, God always prepares things with a long arm. We may not know it, but he does. And I feel in my heart the same Holy Spirit is here to thread many other needles. Hallelujah! My father was a pastor. I grew up in a godly home. I got saved when I was nine. When I was 10, the Holy Spirit spoke to me that one day I would preach the gospel in Africa. I'd never seen an African. Never. There in North Germany, there were no Africans at all when I was a kid. I saw one, the first African I saw in the United Kingdom when I was 19 years of age. And I ran to him and I asked him, please, may I have a picture with you? <laughs> I still got that picture. I was very disappointed when he told me he came from the West Indies. <laughs> but it was good enough. I had that call from God. A year later, Jesus filled me with the Holy Spirit. And then through my teenage years, it was the hand of the Lord that guided me until I was old enough to be accepted at the theological seminary. And then finally we went to Africa. And when I arrived in Africa, I found it a very tough place. Nobody wanted to listen to me. I realized Africa had not been waiting for me. Sometimes I preach to five people. I was absolutely despaired. I said, where are the effects of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? This cannot be it. To cut it all short, one night, I had a dream. I dreamt I saw the whole continent of Africa in form of a map with all the islands around Madagascar and the like. And I saw how the whole continent of Africa became washed in the precious blood of Jesus. I heard a voice cry. I'm sure it was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Africa shall be saved. Yeah. Africa shall be saved. Yeah. I woke up. I jumped out of bed. I said, Africa shall be saved. I'm struggling in this tiny country called Lesotho. Can't get five people together. And now I hear a whole continent is to get saved. And then I noticed something. I made all these my little plans for Jesus. I had to fast and pray a lot to get his blessing for my plans. And now I realized God had another set of plans. 
And I realized if I leave my own plans and I connect with his plans, his plans can never fail. Yeah. I left the Soto, I moved to South Africa right next to that international airport. I went to Botswana for the first meeting, for the first gospel crusade, because Africa was to get saved. That's, to cut a long story short, that stadium shocked me. I prayed, oh Lord, please fill that stadium. Only one church was prepared to cooperate with me, and the pastor said he had 40 people. 40. And my mind played tricks on me. I already saw myself with 40 people in the national stadium. He said to me, what do you need the stadium for? For 40 people, you can come to my church. I said, God spoke to me. And he told me to rent or hire that national stadium. The first night, there were 100 people. It was more than 40, come on. <laughs> oh, I, I know for sure because I counted 10 times. From left to right, and then from right to left, and from front to back, and back to front. But 100 is 100 if you count the heads and not the fingers. 100. I took the Bible, I started to preach. And suddenly, I had preached about 10 minutes. Somebody jumped up and shouted, I've just been healed! Wow! I thought by myself, this is funny. I haven't preached about healing. I learned my first lesson. And this was the lesson. I think Jesus oftentimes can't wait until we have finished with our boring sermons. <laughs> he itches to do great things here in Dubai. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that night, Four people got healed. A blind woman saw, a cripple danced. A few days later, that stadium was packed. It was packed. I learned so many lessons, you have no idea. I have no time to tell you that. But I mean, I've learned so much in the very first crusade that I had. For the first time, I saw 3,000 people jump up, running forward, crying tears of repentance to receive salvation and forgiveness of their sins. That's what, that's, that's what only the Holy Spirit can do. I call the Holy Spirit the master evangelist. Because Jesus said that he... And only He, the Holy Spirit, convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. We can't do this. But when we preach the gospel, the Holy Spirit is in it. He is, he is the hand in the glove of the preached gospel. Amen. All right, well... I experienced the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Lord said to me one night in the stadium, tomorrow I want you to pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I protested. I said, Lord, this is for a prayer meeting, not for a stadium gathering. The Lord rebuked me and he gave me a reason why it was for the stadium. He said, because in the last days, my spirit on all flesh. And if God means what he says, and he always means what he says, 
There is no church big enough. No church. All flesh. That's God's idea. We have to adjust our thinking. Align it with the word of God. And then you will see how the Holy Spirit is going to lift you from face to face. He will be your glory and the lifter of your head. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the first crusade, I went to the next one. There for the first time in my life, I saw we had 30,000 people in one meeting. The next crusade in Cape Town, South Africa. For the first time in my life, I preached to 75,000 people in one meeting. I said to my wife, I was so overwhelmed. I said to my wife, I think this is God's maximum. <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit rebuked me in my heart. He said to me, God has no maximum. Hallelujah. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. Our mighty, almighty God. From Cape Town, I went to Blantyre, Malawi. For the first time in my life, I preached to 150,000 people in one meeting. God began to shake cities. And then he began to shake nations. I went to Nairobi, Kenya, Uhuru Park, Buona Sifu and Sana. Any echo? And uh, 200,000 people were there. In one meeting. The state president came. If they phoned me one hour before the meeting started, the state president is going to come. President Arab Moy. I said, he's most welcome, but I haven't got a chair to offer for him. <laughs> We're all standing. They said, don't you worry, he'll bring his own chairs. <laughs> the state president was so moved by what he saw in that meeting, he he commanded that all television and all radio channels were carrying my meetings live across the whole of East Africa. Amen. Are you interested to hear this testimony first? Wow. I was so blessed. Now, from Nairobi, I, I flew across to Nigeria. Nigerians, my favorite people. I, f I flew to the city of Kaduna. For the first time in my life, I preached to 500,000 people. Half a million. I couldn't believe it. But it was a fact. God was now washing Africa Amen. with the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <laughs> One night when I made an altar call, I'm, I kid you not, I, I, there were 90% of the people who wanted to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. 90%, over 90%. I was so moved when we as team were in the hotel trying to eat dinner. I couldn't eat. I was still filled with the glory of God. I said to my team, do you know what I feel inside of me? They said, tell us. I, he said, tonight I got a feeling that if Jesus keeps saving souls at this rate, I think 
one day the devil is going to sit alone in hell. I know this is theologically not correct, but I wished it was. I'll tell you why. Because hell was not made for man. Hell was made for Satan and his angels. That's what the Bible tells us. So when I say, when I say what I now say, I want you to know that I'm not swearing. I say to hell with the devil and to heaven with the people. Hallelujah. The crusade meetings began to keep growing. 700,000, 800,000, 1 million. 1,250,000 in the city of Ibadan in one meeting. Then we came to Lagos. For the first time in my life, I preached to a crowd of 1,600,000. Right to the horizon. We have, we have loudspeakers, you can believe me. We have the best PA system anyone can have. It goes miles. I preach the gospel in hi-fi. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That night I had a revelation. Every time I make an altar call for sinners to be saved, I have tens of thousands of counselors in the crowd. That night when 1.6 million people were there, we had 200,000 of them were counselors. We had, we had 30,000 ushers. We had 10,000 police and they got all saved. Amen. That night, when, when someone wants to receive Jesus as their Savior, they get a follow-up booklet called, Now That You Are Saved. That becomes a bridge from the field into the local churches. I'm a great believer in the church. Evangelism must always lead into the church. If not, it's just a show. We counted those cards that night of people who had completed this decision. One million ninety-three thousand. One meeting. One meeting. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. I suddenly realized. In one meeting, Jesus did more than in the 20 years before when I arrived. In one meeting. In one meeting. The gospel is the power of God. And when the gospel is preached, it becomes an event. Somebody said to me, the your Bible, your Bible, your Bible is not good news, he said. News I see on television at noon. Your Bible is good history. It's good history. Why does the, is the word of God called, the gospel is called good news? Because when it is preached, it happens. When the gospel is preached, it becomes an event. 
and people get saved. Yeah. Uh, curses get broken, chains are cut off, marriages come back together again, the sick are healed, and they say, it's news, it happened now. Hallelujah. I'm an evangelist. I preach the ABC of the gospel and I'm proud of it. It doesn't mean that I don't know the XYZ. I do. But evangelists preach the ABC because they have to lead the people from where they are into the arms of Jesus. Through the narrow door into the kingdom of God. Isn't that true? Yes. Well, I'm telling you, what God has done is amazing. In the last 10 years, I'm speaking from the year 2000 to 2009. We had 55 million registered decisions for Jesus Christ. 55 million oh hallelujah fifty five million huh. I told that in Switzerland at a pastor's conference in Switzerland I said Jesus saved fifty five million people in ten years and the Swiss said to me, Brother Bonke, that is Africa. This is Switzerland. I said, well, you, you are contradicting scripture. I said to them. They said to me, which scripture? I said, John 3 verse 16. There it says, for God so loved the world. I say, you Swiss have now to tell me whether Switzerland is part of that world. In John 3.16. I said, if Jesus can save 55 million souls in 10 years in Africa, he could save Switzerland one Saturday afternoon. I want to make you hungry. Hungry for God and for the Holy Spirit. Hungry to go when Jesus says go. Because Jesus doesn't sit with sitters. But he goes with goers. And he works with workers. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We've got to get moving. And he will move with us. Isn't that true? Wow. I've got more to tell you. But I, I have to. I, I, I think I better start with the preaching. Are you blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What touches my heart? Here tonight, and I believe the Lord wants me to speak about this, is how progressively the Lord changed my own understanding of his word. He gave me secrets, which are actually no secrets, but I had never seen it, and I had never heard it preached. And when I was in the school of the Holy Spirit, and he began to teach me, I, I was a totally different man. And I wished I could take every one of you by your hand and lead you from B to C or from C to D. And you know the alphabet is long. But there is a Z. There is a Z. And the Lord will bless you. The alphabet of God is 
from Omega. From Alpha to Omega. Amen. Amen. The beginning and the end. Um, I'm turning to Matthew. I told you already about this. The guy who said the, the Bible is good history, not good news. And you heard me say what, what, I, what I said to him. Somebody else came to me, and a boy of 17 or so, still at high school. He pointed to my Bible when I came out of a meeting and he said to me, Preacher, I don't like your book. I said, why not? He said, your book is 2,000 years old. I didn't tell him it's actually older. He said, your book is 2,000 years old and I am 17. He said, I don't like to live by such an antique book. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I live today. I want to be modern. There are, there are different rules today. I want to be modern. Ah, I love young people. I've got eight grandchildren. I put my arm around him, his shoulder. The sun was shining. I said, young man, have a look at the sun. I said, the sun is also, he's actually very much older than 2,000 years. <laughs> I said, the sun is much older than 2,000 years. But although the sun is so old, very old, it is very hot. <laughs> I said, and the Bible is very old. But it is very powerful. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Now I lost my scripture again. <laughs> Matthew 28. The last verses of this wonderful gospel. And this is what it says. I read from verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all 